We've been spending the last 24 hours driving around Paris in the Dacia Spring, one of your creations, and Europe's cheapest electric car. It's actually one of the only electric cars in Europe that you could even use the word cheap to describe. Is it very difficult to make a cheap electric car, or is everyone else just making it look difficult? Mm. Uh, first, the Spring is not only cheap. <laughs> I would say this car is the essential. Mm. For us, for Dacia, this car was made to be that's said the electric revolution by Dacia. So making an electric car affordable for the people and very essential in, to, in order to answer to the city needs that uh, people have for commuting purposes, for example. We were saying yesterday when we were driving, there's a lovely weight to the controls in the car. Everything feels quite tough and rugged. It's, it, it, it's, it's entirely possible to make a car that's affordable but still has plenty of character to it, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's not only a city car, it's also a city car with a flavor. And the flavor of this car is to be with an outdoor flavor. Uh, so you can see it, for, like, for example, on the exterior design cues that you can have, such as the lateral protection uh, and the SUV look of the car, the high stance it has, the ground clearance and, and so on. And you're right that inside also we try to keep this kind of uh, outdoor spirit uh, in the controls uh, and let's say the surroundings that we have inside. One of my favorite features on the car that I noticed yesterday was what you guys call the flexi wheels, which are basically the most convincing looking wheel covers I've ever seen in my life. I had to tap on them to make sure. Yeah. Um, could you tell me about a few of the other, your favorite features on the car, some yeah. of the things that you're really proud of? This one is very really interesting that you mention it because this one is clearly in the heart of what is, let's say, the Dacia mindset, which is the design to cost. Mm -hmm. Because here, it looks like an alloy wheel, mm -hmm. but it is not. <laughs> And in terms of, so you have the value, but you do not have the cost. And if, we, if you think about doing, let's say, affordable cars, uh, uh, but still with value, this is exactly what we are looking for uh, in, inside uh, those cars. But th this car is not only, let's say, a beauty in itself, or let's say a design, uh, a styling car. Obviously, it has a purpose. For me, the, what we have to mention is that all the, th the way when we were developing this car, we had only one obsession, which was, let's say, to keep the weight very low. In order to secure that all, let's say, what we would put inside, type of battery, let's say, size of the battery, size of the engine, we would be, let's say, as affordable as possible. Uh, because uh, this is exactly what we were looking to. For us, uh, taking this car into the market was a kind of manifesto of what could bring Dacia into this market. Because we could have uh, said, OK, why Dacia is doing an electric car? And we would not have done an electric car as the others. So th this car is clearly not like the others. So we clearly designed it at purpose to be a city car, uh, very light, uh, very affordable for the people. And this was, let's say, our mindset uh, during the development uh, phase. As I'm sure you'll agree, driving a small car in a busy city like Paris is so much better. Do you think that maybe with electric technology, with bespoke EV architecture, in the future we're maybe going to see a move away from these unnecessarily big SUVs and that cars might become smaller with the interiors getting bigger? Mm. Yes, um, the first thing is that uh, we have to design at purpose and this car has been designed at purpose really answering the commuting needs uh, of the people. In the morning, A to B, I'm going to work, I'm going to pick up the children and, and so on. And here you have to design the car for this purpose. You do not have to add, let's say, extra additional things. Obviously, we have other manufacturers and even mainstream ones that are doing like, you know, putting all the polyvalence that are needed by the people inside an electric car. And there it's going to, it, the, the challenge or the equation is much more complicated to solve because at the end it's heavier, it's obviously m more, much more expensive. But that was not at all our, uh, let's say, intention uh, inside, inside Dacia. Uh, we clearly wanted a, a car that was, uh, let's say, affordable for all, an electric car affordable for all. Look, currently the, in Europe, 
you have around 60% of the people saying, ah, I, w I was willing to buy an electric car. Yes, but 30% of them were not able because the price was, let's say, the, the, the main problem that, mm. that they have. So our, uh, let's say, intention was to say, okay, how can I disrupt this question doing a car that would be affordable for, for example, in France, we are starting at 17,000 uh, euro without the incentive. So then after you have the incentive that ca can even lower the price. So this is the, ch the cheapest, let's say, the most affordable one. Uh, and, and, and we reached that because it was designed at purpose. Could you talk to me about some of the decisions that have been made with that car in order to hit that low price point while still keeping it a high quality product? Mm -hmm. So for example, I know that the motor is relatively modest for an electric car, which I'm absolutely fine with because it's plenty mm -hmm. for the city. What are some other ways that you've, that you've, um, that you've made sort of sensible decisions to keep the price low? Uh, here I can, I can do a little bit of history because this car has, a, has to some extent a long history. You know, th at the very beginning, uh, the, this CMFA platform, which is the base of this car, uh, has been developed for international market, for more, for more for Renault variants in India and then in Latin America. Uh, and then we went to China looking at how we could get into this market and so on. A Renault variant uh, has been developed in EV, so taking the CMFA Alliance platform but putting it EV. So let's say I would say that when Dacia was thinking about how to bring an electric car in Europe, this ecosystem was exi existing within the, the group. Uh, and the, the lucky thing, is, uh, the lucky we are, uh, was that uh, this platform, CMFA platform, is a super light platform, very compact and very roomy. Because it was, let's say, designed to cost at the, at the, at the, the principle since the beginning. So then what we had to do was rather simp simple, let's say, is that to take the, the, this car produced in China based on Alliance platform, uh, let's say, and to, to make, let's say, the best of both worlds, I would say. The, f the first word is that we have a huge knowledge in the electric, uh, let's say, uh, uh, field uh, inside the Renault group. So to benefit from that, all the experience to develop a good car uh, as an electric car, I would say. And second point is, was to, let's say, made it a Dacia. <laughs> So it may make the right choices, do the styling adaptation, uh, as well as obviously uh, adaptations of the regulation for Europe, the safety, uh, the content, uh, uh, let's say the charging, uh, and, and so the multimedia. So we started from this very good base, very good ecosystems, and we, let's say, bring that back to, to, to Europe. And I think this is a bit of the recipe of, of the, uh, let's say, the, the, the success of the car. We can say a success because we are already are, let's say, full of orders uh, for, for this car. And uh, that's why we are, let's say, kind of unique uh, in terms of offer, uh, of, of offer in, the, in the market. You obviously mentioned Renault Group and one of the privileges of being part of Renault Group is you get to borrow from all this experience from the Renault brand. Is there any key learnings from Zoe, for example, in terms of what customers do and don't like an electric car that have been applied to the spring? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I this is a very important point because um, I it's, not, it's not only Dacia, it's also the part of the, the, f the Renault Group expertise in terms of the EV. Uh, so uh, we have to say that all the uh, electrification of this car has been done by the, uh, let's say, uh, Techno Center Renault Group engineers. Uh, uh, let's say using all the experience that we, we have uh, on, the, on the Zoe. Uh, all the, le, let's say, the testing, the number of kilometers, the check that has been done, uh, are, are, are we're using, let's say, the, uh, the EV expertise of the group in terms of the check-in. Um, and what was interesting is uh, also what one point I, I would mention in terms of uh, how we think the car, um, because we used to think about a car to be a little bit autonomous, uh, but the car should be a little bit more connected in the ecosystem. And for an electric car, it's even more important. So I would mention two things that we brought from the Zoe experience. The first one is that we need a, a, a certain level of connected services. Uh, when I say connection, is that I want to uh, uh, launch my, let's say, remote, uh, my charging. I want to launch my preconditioning. I want to see where is my car. So we, since the start, even though the car is, let's say, rather affordable, mm. uh, we have the, the connection of the services. And this, we knew from the Zoe experience that this is an important, the car is not only, uh, let's say, itself, but a part of the, uh, of the ecosystem. So th th this was one of the, the points. And the second point 
he was to say, OK, uh, we need to adapt also, let's say, the charging capabilities of the car. Uh, you have, for example, uh, here we have uh, AC uh, and two DC, two DC 30 kilowatts uh, uh, charging. So we have, a, let's say, a wide range of possibilities uh, in terms of charging. And this was also, let's say, uh, take, taken back from the experience of, uh, of Zoe. Do you agree that maybe there needs to be a slight change in mindset as we enter electrification with people focusing more on just buying what they need and nothing too much? I am completely with you on that point. I, I'm convinced of that. Uh, we, sh we should go clearly to the answer to the people usages. Mm. And uh, if you take uh, a segment, so the, the city car or mini car, uh, uh, city car segment, the average uh, kilometer uh, per day is 30 kilometers. This is, this is statistics of the usage of the people. So when you're buying a car to do this, how is the, the, the range you need? With 230 or even 300 in, in, in city, you're done for, <laughs> I mean, you, you're done for 10 days. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's a one week charge. Okay, it's so the, the, the range, but of obviously this is, uh, let's say, taking time because the inertia of the people the, the, because they need to understand and we need to explain. Okay, a couple last questions. I'm going to talk to you about the future. Um, about three months ago, I think, it was, it was reported that Dacia was having a good look at the spring and the performance of the spring and then formulating a decision about the UK and right-hand drive models. Do you have any information for us about whether or not we may see the spring in the UK in the future? So, uh, obviously, we have appetite. So we want to, let's say, to extend uh, this car as much as it can because uh, uh, he has a great potential. We are currently looking at uh, how we could do, let's say, in more international markets that are covered by, by Dacia in order to extend progressively. Uh, we are currently under study uh, for the, let's say, a UK variant, but nothing is decided yet. So <laughs> sorry, but I cannot, uh, let's say, give you a Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, something. Well, uh, I'm yeah. hoping lots of our subscribers are going to comment on these videos and say, I'll buy one, please. <laughs> and that can help your decision. Understandable. Um, and then secondly, obviously, uh, Renault Group has some bespoke EV architecture at its disposal now, the platform that's used on the new Megane, that's shared with Nissan. Um, I imagine that that's something you're having a good look at. and hoping to apply to future Dacia models? Because one thing I think about the spring is just imagine how much space you'd have in that tiny little package if it was sitting on the bespoke architecture. Is that, a, is that something we can look forward to in the coming years? Uh, here we are coming to, to a question of, let's say, the Dacia uh, strategy uh, globally. Um, we have one component which is super uh, important to us, which is the CMFB platform. Mm. CMFB platform is the platform that we are using with the new Sandero, the new Jogger. So this is a brand new platform taken from the Renault Group that we designed to cost uh, in order to fit exactly to the need and the essentiality that we want to bring to, uh, to our customers. And um, here, uh, this platform is very, very flexible. So based on this platform, you can put ICE engine, you can put, uh, let's say, uh, uh, hybrid engine, and in the, in the future, you would have even, let's say, electric variants. So the, the question is that, we have, let's say, technically speaking, uh, the ability to go in, let's say, quite every technology uh, that we could, uh, we could have. Now the question is when, and the, the when will be the answer, uh, the question of the, 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 the customers, yes. and when the cost to value ratio, let's say, the essentiality will be there. So we are constantly, and this is my job, and not only mine, but the, the, the one of the all the people in the Dacia business unit, which is, okay, like looking around, uh, uh, let's say, listening to us, to our customer in order to know when the maturity is there and when we could do the disruption, because this is what we are looking to. So nothing is closed, everything is open, everything is under study, uh, and the question is more when than, than uh, let's say, w w what we would do, but when.